Praise the Lord, everybody. God, gives, God deserves more praise than that. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Is anyone excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Is anyone excited? Amen. God has brought you this far. Praise God. God has brought you this far through it all, through everything you've experienced. Amen. Um, I give honor to the men of God in my life. I give honor to uh, Minister Stephen, Minister Leo, and, and Pastor. Um, all of them, unfortunately, couldn't be with us today. They each have a, a family member that's sick. Um, so keep them in your prayers, but they'll be back soon. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, they'll be fine. So if, if you guys could turn with me really quick to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 6. Can you turn this mic down a little bit, please? Sorry, there's a little bit of feedback. Jonah chapter 1. If you have it, say amen, please. And it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had laid down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray today that the Lord's will would be done in this place. Please bow your heads with me. Lord Jesus, we come before you today. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you all the honor and all the glory, Lord Jesus. This, Lord Jesus, is all for you today, Lord Jesus. We are here, Lord Jesus, to worship you. We are here in church, Lord Jesus, not for our own gain, not for our own benefit, Lord Jesus, but for what you want to do, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would have your way, Lord Jesus, with me, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus, speak through me today, Lord Jesus. Let there be an anointing, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit, every demon, Lord Jesus, that would seek to distract in this place. Hallelujah. I bind every spirit, Lord Jesus, that must leave now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your will will be done now. Hallelujah. Can someone give the Lord a hand praise today? Amen. Can someone give the Lord a hand praise today? Oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, if you can't worship Him here, if you can't worship Him in your own house, Come on, can someone worship him today? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You may take your seats. Jesus. I'm going to give some context to this story. Um, I'm sure the story of Jonah is uh, familiar with, with many of us, if not most of us. Um, Jonah is remembered as being a reluctant prophet of the Lord. Amen. Uh, Kind of a bad thing. He's not really remembered as like, the greatest. Um, he's not like a Moses. He's not like uh, a Daniel. He's not like a Joseph. And that is because he was first reluctant. Amen. He showed um, weakness when God had called him out. But he's remembered as a reluctant prophet of the Lord. And he knew what his assignment was. Amen. God told him. Um, he just didn't want to do it. Right? He just didn't want to complete it. So his assignment was, he was called to Nineveh. Amen? The story called Nineveh. Um, Nineveh was a great city back then. Nineveh was a great city. It was huge. It had become a thriving hub of civilization and trade. Okay, so think of it as like a, think of it as like a New York, just, just any big city. Think of it like that. But the thing is that it was filled, filled to the brim with sin. Okay, Nineveh was a sinful city. Um, so 
It, it was filled with, with thriving sin and specifically violence. There was a lot of violence that plagued Nineveh. Um, and we'll, we'll see that today. Um, but we could think of it today as any one of our great cities, right? Because all of our great cities have a lot of violence, a lot of sin, and a lot of bad things going on, right? You could say Vegas, you could say New York, you could say whatever. But we tend to think of him in such a negative way, right? Oh, Jonah, and he didn't want to do what the Lord wanted him to do, so he got swallowed up by a fish. But how many of you are in Jonah's position right now? Amen? How many of you are in the same position that Jonah was in? The very word of the Lord came to him, but it says that he wanted to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Okay, not only does it say that he just wanted to leave, that he wanted to escape, but he wanted to escape something specific, the presence. He wanted to escape the presence of the Lord. Why is that? People, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen? Can someone say amen to that? God has been calling each of you for so long. As long as you've been alive, He's been calling. That is the truth. Before you were in your mother's womb, He called you. And you might have been prophesied over, or you might not have, right? But that really doesn't matter. You have a calling over you no matter what. No matter what has happened to you in your life, no matter what you've experienced, no matter any pain or hurt, you have a calling. You have a, a reason and a purpose for being here today. And God has been tugging at your heart, amen? At all of our hearts. God is always tugging. He's always calling us to go deeper with Him, to serve Him more, to devote more of ourselves to Him, to be more holy, amen? And He's calling us for something greater, to live an extreme life for Him, amen? We're not called to live a comfortable lifestyle. Um, we're called to live an extreme life. And too many of us are trying to flee from His presence. Too many of us are trying to flee from the presence of God. And all of you here today might say, that's not true, I'm here in church. That's not true, I'm here, I'm church. I'm in church, I, this is where the Lord is. Amen, that's, that's true, this is the house of God. But we have so much work to do, amen? And, and, and we tend to think, since I'm in, in church, I'm in the right place, I'm doing the right thing. But where we have heard God the most, amen, in church, where we have seen Him work the most, in church. Every time we come to church, we experience something of God, but yet some of us are still fleeing His presence. Some of us are still fleeing His presence. And we use church as an excuse to feel good about it. Well, I'll, I'll flee from His presence, but I'll go to church so that it doesn't look like I'm fleeing His presence. Amen? I know what I'm talking about because I did that very thing. Amen? I would come to church and I would flee from his presence. I would just be here to uh, play the drums. Amen? Play the drums. I was cool. And then I'd leave and go home and do my own thing. So I want us to get this implanted in our spirit today. We can't flee from his presence. If anything, we need to go deeper into it and dive into it. Amen? Someone is receiving this word right now. You have been called to dive into his presence. There's been something tugging at your heart all week. All month, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. But you've been too afraid, too ashamed. Now is the time to go deeper. Amen? Amen. Do not flee. Jonah chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, it says, But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the spirit was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. Amen? Jonah was fast asleep during the storm. Amen. People, this is all for you. Amen? This is for all of you who think that who you hang out with doesn't really matter. If you think that you can hang out with anyone and you'll be fine, that's a lie from the enemy, okay? Because of one man on the boat, 
One man was on the boat, and all of them were about to die. Did they do anything wrong? We're all sinners, but did they disobey God? I don't know. But they were all about to die anyway because of one man's disobedience. So if you're in a group of people, but one man is disobedient, what does that say? Where is the the danger lie? Okay? Your friend may look nice. They may be the nicest person on the planet. The nicest person. I've met the nicest people outside of church. And um, they, they may look good. They may talk very nice and all this stuff. But without the fear of the Lord, they will not edify you. Without the Spirit of God inside them, they can't really help you out. Okay? Um, especially if that person is your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Okay? If you have a boyfriend that's outside of church, a girlfriend that's outside of church, and you think that they're helping you along and edifying you, but they don't know God, how is that possible, guys? Okay? This might sound harsh, but I came to preach the Word of God today. I didn't come to make you happy. Okay? I came to preach the Word of God. Your boyfriend or your girlfriend isn't always the best thing for you. God is the best thing for you. Come on, people. We need to be equally yoked here. And you can't be equally yoked with an unbeliever. Why? You'll sink. Okay? (laughs) The warning is in the Bible. So, Jonah chapter 1 verse 6, it says, So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. When you are doing wrong in life, when we live in sin and consistent disobedience, we become blind to the things of God. When you are in consistent disobedience and in consistent sin, you become blind. We become blind of our situation and we cannot hear His voice. Right? We are asleep spiritually. The whole storm was shaking the boat. It was, it was about to be broken. Have you guys ever seen a broken boat? All I think of is like Titanic. How does anyone sleep through that? How does anyone sleep through that? If you're in disobedience, you'll be asleep while you're being shaken. But the people who notice something is going on are going to be the ones, the ones around you. They're going to notice something's happening with you. Something's happening. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, this is just life. This is just life. No, no, no. Something's happened. They all went to Jonah. Wake up! And they were all scared. And they, they, and he woke up on the boat. Right? It's time to wake up today. It's time to wake up to your situation. I always say this. I always say this. The only way to get better in your situation is to realize that it could be better. The only way to get closer to God is to realize how far you are from Him. Okay? You, we have to be real with our self, church. Stop feeding yourself lies. You might think that you look fine and that notice, no one notices that you, um, that you aren't supposed to be where you are with God, but people do notice. Amen. People do notice when someone isn't aligned with the Spirit. Amen? Amen? At least people in the Spirit will notice. Yeah. And uh, I have noticed, okay? And God has sent me here to tell you today, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Amen? Can we picture that for a second? They were all praying to different gods. Yeah. All of them praying to different gods. Oh, I, don't even, I don't know what the gods were. Maybe they were praying to their iPhone or their TV or their boyfriend or their girlfriend. But they knew something was different about him. You, your God, pray to him. Your God, we need to call on our God today. Can someone say amen? We need to call on God today. Can someone praise the Lord? In Jonah chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, it says, Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? They're talking to Jonah. What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. How funny that that's how he chooses to describe God. He made the sea while they're about to die in the sea. Um, But Jonah finally admits the truth that he knew all along. All right, guys, it's me. That's what he told him. Guys, it's my fault that we're about to die. Guys, 
I was the one who disobeyed God. I am the reason for the storm. But he identifies himself as a Hebrew who fears the Lord, which is interesting because it looks like he didn't fear the Lord enough. He was willing to disobey completely and go separate from what God had planned for him. Amen? Jonah 15, Jonah chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, it says, So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Amen? Because, because he was honest with them, because he realized the situation, and he said, throw me, throw me, cast me into the ocean, they threw him out, and the waters were still. Amen? How amazing is that? How amazing is it that they were willing to offer up a sacrifice like this, but Jonah wasn't willing to obey when he was called by the Lord? How amazing is it that right after they were told, it's my God, they worship that God, they got on their knees. But for some reason for us, it takes so much to get us to worship Him. It takes so much. We need to see a move of God, and then I'll worship Him. You need to worship God when you don't feel like it. You need to worship God when you can't feel Him. You need to worship God when you think He's not there. Amen? He is always there. He is always there. Verse 17, it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. God needed Jonah to, to be alone. God needed Jonah to be alone to work with him, to work on him. This story serves as a warning for all of us today. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor, it doesn't matter if you just got to church a week ago, we all have a calling from God. That means that we all have an opportunity to say no. Wow. Yeah. And this story, it's, it's warning us, each and every one of you has a special calling Amen. and a special anointing that only God can give you. Yeah. Amen. Only God can give you that. Yet not all of us are active in it. Wow. I see a lot of people in this church today, praise God, but not all of us are active in the calling that, God's, that God has for us. Oh, amen. We seem to be waiting for God to really do something in our lives. God, I really want to see you, and then I'll act in my calling. Or we ignore the calling because we would rather live comfortably in sin. But this is a warning that not only will a storm come to your life to shake you up, but a fish will come as well oh. if you are disobedient. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather be in a dangerous storm or would you rather be in the belly of a great fish? <laughs> Amen? Which one would you rather be in? I don't know. I, I think I'd rather be in the storm, but uh, maybe the belly of the fish is warm. Um, but I, I wouldn't want either. Amen? I wouldn't want either. But this process is a process that God uses for all of us when we're disobedient. Wow. Amen? Jonah finally admitted to his wrongdoings. He said, it was me, I was the one all along, I disobeyed God, cast me into the ocean. And he finally told the people on the boat, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Not only did he realize his identity in God, but he worshipped him in that same sentence too. The God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Amen? When you run from the things of God, you begin to lose your identity in Christ. When you run from God, when you run from His presence, you start to lose who you are. You start to get confused. You start to wonder about the things of the world. Amen? And you try to find your identity in something else. Wow. Something else. A boy, a girl, a substance, entertainment. Anything. It could be anything in this world. Yeah. But too often do we tend to cling on to things of this world rather than cling on to God. Wow. And then we have our identity. So we're disobedient. Wow. Wait, but, but I love her and she loves me so much. This is who I am. And then God has to break it up. And you're lost. Wow. Who am I now? I don't know who I am. She's gone. 
He's gone. The drug is gone. Yeah. My life is different. Where do I go to now? There's only one place to go to. There's only one person to seek after that. Amen? There's only one other place to go. But we try to substitute an eternal God. We try to substitute an almighty God who knows no bounds, who knows no limits, and who loves you. But you try to substitute Jesus who loves you so much and who gave his life for you with something of the world. We cannot substitute Jesus for anything. You put one thing above Jesus and that is idolatry. You put your wife above Jesus, that's idolatry. You put yourself above Jesus, that's idolatry. And no matter how deep you go, no matter how deep you get into the sin, you will never forget that God was there. Amen? Even while I was addicted, I knew that God was there. It brought shame upon me, but I knew that God was there, that He still comforted me. All the backsliders, they know that God is with them. They know that God is calling out. That's why it's even harder for them to come to church. That's why it's even harder for them to come back. Because they know that He was there all along. So, God has to send a storm to wake us up sometimes. Amen. God has to shake you up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He needs to show you, hey, 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 you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know where I'd be without my storms. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. But after the storm, he sends a fish. Amen. Amen. Some of you are thinking, well, I've never had a fish in my life. There was, there was nothing that happened like that to me. But listen, this is how God deals with us, okay? At some point, if we're in sin, we wake up and we realize, I need to change. God, I need to come back to you. God, I see now that I'm your child. God, you've been waiting there all along. And then, once we realize that, we're put into the fish's belly. Mm. This is the difference between the fish and the storm. The storm wakes you up, yeah. but the fish comes when you see your wrongs. And the fish, the fish's purpose is to get you alone. Mm-hmm. See, God works in the most when you are alone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God works in you the most when you are alone with Him. Right. What is that called? That's called intimacy. Yes. Okay? Intimacy. So a fish comes and it takes you alone, but it takes you deep. He was on he was surface level. Do you guys realize that? He was surface level and then a fish got him and he Ooh, how deep did he go? I don't know. But Matthew 6 6, it says, But you when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. The secret place. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. Amen? Can someone give God a praise for that? That is why the fish comes. The fish takes us to a secret place. For so long you weren't praying. For so long you didn't want to seek Him. For so long you were with your friends doing bad things. For so long all this and all that. And then all of a sudden you realize that you were wrong. And you realize that He was there all along. And you realize that He just wanted you. So you closed your door and you said, Jesus, I have no one else to go to. Jesus, everything in my life is fading away. I'm in pain. I'm in... I'm in suffering. I don't know what to do. And you closed your door and you were where? In the secret place. And you chose to be intimate with God for once. For once in a long time you were intimate with Him. And He's calling us all to be intimate with Him today. We need to have a relationship with Him. And that is why we are called to spend time praying in the secret place. Because when we finally get alone when we finally are alone with just me and God, there's no more distractions. The distractions cease. It's quiet. It's just me and you, God. Show me what you want to do. 
Show me where you want me to go. And when we get to him and we're heartbroken and we're confused or we're frustrated, he wants us to be intimate with him, amen? He wants us to be intimate with him. But intimacy is meant to happen between how many people? Two. Amen? Praise God. I'll do this. Two people, guys. When you get married, it's just you and your wife. Or if you're a girl, you're you and your husband. Two people, that's who you're intimate with. Sorry, one person, that's who you're intimate with. All right, intimacy is between two people. So God does not call you to be intimate while your mom is in the room and while you're at church. And this prayer is amazing and church is awesome. But you need to spend time with him, just you and God. If you really want to see a difference in your, in your walk with God, you need to get alone in your room, get on your knees and pray. Just watch how he'll speak to you. Just watch what will happen. Your most intimate prayers will be in the secret place. Your most intimate prayers will be when you're in the belly of the fish. Amen? When I was in the belly of the fish, I was just, oh my gosh, I was crying out. And it was the longest I've ever prayed. I was surprised. I looked at my phone. I was like, oh my gosh. I prayed for that long? Yes, because time ceases to just, it doesn't matter. The amount of time, it doesn't matter. What you need to do, it doesn't matter. When you're really hungry, when you're really desperate, you'll get to the secret place and you'll just pray. And God will finally say, you have come to me alone. You have come to me, just you and me. That's what God wants with us. How special is that? An almighty and all-powerful God, He wants to spend time with just you. God who has all of this creation, everything that He's done, all this amazing stuff that we've read about, but He wants to spend time with you. Amen? And we see that in the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed. He finally prayed in, verse, in chapter 2, verse 4, verses 2 through 4, sorry. It says, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple, amen? What happened in this prayer? He said, I was cast out of your sight. You didn't want to see me anymore, but now I will look towards you. I didn't want to look at you before, but now I'll look at you. I didn't want to have anything to do with you before. I wanted to leave your presence, but now I'll look at your temple. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. While in the belly of the fish, our perspective begins to change and our wants begin to change. Our focus shifts back towards Him. Amen? It shifts back towards Him. And we see that after this prayer that He spoke to the Lord, the fish vomited Him. It spit Him out disgusting, but it spit him out. And chapter 3, verse 4, it says, And Jonah began to enter the sea on the first day's walk. Just came out of the fish. All right, now I'll go do what God wanted me to do. Amen? <laughs> and, he, and then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Do you guys see what happened? Jonah was in the belly of the fish. He didn't, want it, he didn't want anything, he didn't want to have anything to do with God before. But then he comes out of the fish and he says, you know what? I'm going to take over the city in 40 days. What great faith. His faith had increased while in the fish. And in verse 5 through 6 it says, So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed the fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then the Lord came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. 